Once again, Professor Pika, the Belgian scientist, has ascended the heights never before reached by man to study the stratosphere, an unknown region which surrounds the Earth at a distance of more than seven miles. Last year in May, he reached over nine miles. Preparations for the flight began at midnight, but thousands of people have made the journey from Zurich in special train, whilst a battalion of Swiss troops held down the guy ropes. Professor Picard himself superintended the arrangements for the inflation of the balloon. And then, when all was ready, he clambered inside the gondola which contained the mass of scientific instruments and gave the signal, let go. Rose quickly and eventually climbed to over ten and a half miles above the earth. Just imagine, whilst we were sweltering in the heat wave, he was nearly frozen to death in 15 degrees centigrade below zero. After being aloft for over 12 hours, he eventually landed near Lake Garda in Italy. From a practical point of view, Professor Picard's experiment was the highest possible result. One of the things that we'll definitely do will be to enable better weather forecasts for me. And won't that be a boon when we're picking out our holidays? The eyes of science and aviation are on the new cult of stratosphere ballooning. But just what is the stratosphere? Well, we'll tell you. The Earth is enveloped in a sea of air which we call atmosphere. How one goes, the colder it becomes. Viewing the Earth from this angle, we see the atmosphere divided into several well-defined layers. The innermost of these is called the troposphere, the air in which we live. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere, a much thinner mixture. The troposphere reaches to a height of six to ten miles. Mount Everest, the very top of our Earth world, rises five and a half miles above sea level, more than halfway to the stratosphere. Now the troposphere is constantly in motion due to its proximity to the Earth's surface. But above in the stratosphere there are neither storms, winds, ice, rain or fog. Silence reigns eternally in the icy coldness of 70 degrees below zero. The sun and stars shine brightly in a purplish black sky. From the vast space between the stars far above the stratosphere come the cosmic rays which are believed to be the key to the creation of matter. Mind. To study them, experiment with the laboratories into giant balloons. Endeavouring to get above the Earth's storms and disturbances, they rise into the void of perpetual calm and quiet in order to study what is over and beyond. The highest in air of place is going to be good to eat. But in 1932, Professor Picard made the first scientific flight, achieving a height of 10.1 miles. In 1933, Settle and Ford near the United States Army rose to an altitude of 11 and a half miles, obtaining more value than they had. The Soviet airmen then broke the record and attained a height of 11.8 miles. There is a limit to which free balloons can ascend, so perhaps the future of stratosphere exploration lies in the rocket type of ship. There's no telling what one will be discovered. It has been proved that stratosphere flying is practical. Aeroplanes will be able to shake off the resistance of dense heavy air as they rise higher into the stratosphere and reach 500 miles an hour. Commerce will then be able to speed from America to Europe overnight. 